congratulations. You guys <laughs> did it. Uh, from 1.1 billion to the first Marvel movie that will fail to break $100 million at the U.S. box office. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, since the Marvels were announced, we always said this is going to be uh, not good. And it has been exactly that, Brian. I even asked Brian um, before we did the show, do you really want to talk about the Marvels? And, the Mar- and Brian said, we absolutely have to talk about the Marvels. we got to show what the impact of what they have been able to accomplish with this movie will be the tipping point, as they say, for the rest of the MCU. Brian. Yeah. So lower, further, faster. Congratulations. You guys <laughs> did it. Uh, from $1.1 billion to the first Marvel movie that will fail to break $100 million at the U.S. box office. Um, look, opening weekend missed all the lowest projections. Came in at forty-six million dollars. Global was one ten. Think about that: one hundred fifty-three million U.S. alone for the first movie. One ten worldwide for the second. As we sit here taping week two, weekend two, eighty percent decline. The single highest decline Ooh, ever recorded. I, yo, I didn't even know that. Ever recorded 80. in the superhero genre ever record not morbius not <clears throat> not nothing not the worst you know you, movie, you know you know happy flash, about this right not black adam you know this. who's happy about all this the rock go ahead <laughs> <laughs> he, he he's going back to dc being like my box office looking better by the minute <laughs> hey, hey, hey he ain't lying though go ahead So, as I said, 80% decline. There's a lot of competition coming. This movie will not break $100 million US. It may not break $200 million global. They they could be looking at a $250, $300 million loss on this movie alone. That's why we need to talk about it. Because when we talk about the engine for change, the engine for change is always money. It's always money. And I know... You know, there was some reaction to our review show, basically basically saying, why did we kill it so much? We both gave it zero stars. If you look at Rotten Tomatoes, it's technically fresh. It's like 62%. It's a sham, people. That don't make, it's that... a sham because the numbers don't lie. The numbers <laughs> tell you people didn't care at the start and the people who went told nobody to go see it after them. The numbers don't lie. The numbers are worthy of a zero star performance and that's not a, again we're not killing the performers themselves we're killing the package Damn. the package of this movie how it was put together how it was framed everything that went into it 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 never had a chance it never had a chance and that's why we've been on the train we've been on look we don't like being right from the standpoint of failure but yeah. failure of this magnitude is the kind of thing that will force change yes. that's why it's important and so part of what we're here to do in the show is actually to start to talk about like, well, how do you work with this? How do you come off of this and try to get things going in a right direction that doesn't rely on Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman to save the day? Something that you actually, <laughs> well, because those guys have been around for a while. That's different. That's an established property. That's like a yeah. false dawn. That's like Guardians 3, right? Everyone came out for Guardians 3 just fine because yeah. Guardians 3 had its audience that it earned over the past decades. We're talking about starting anew. That's what we're talking about. How do you do that when the audience is basically saying, not only do we not care, we actively avoid and dislike the Marvel label on a movie right now. That's what this box office says. Brian, don't let the reactions in the theaters fool you. That's not money right there. There's no, there's no money there. I'm sorry. No, to me, Young Avengers is a TV show. I think Disney is having this problem. They're getting the medium wrong on some of these projects. Like I, we, it's funny. We love Loki. It's funny in retrospect to think about like, would Loki have worked as a movie? There are definitely scenes that would have worked in a movie. I don't know if the series as a whole would have worked better as a movie, but it is an interesting discussion because I feel like you're something like young Avengers 
could be very successful on TV for the audience that it wants to get. Yeah. To me, Thunderbolt should be on TV. It should not be a movie. I've said this from the yeah. beginning. I don't understand why this is a film. So yeah. like, I feel like part of the challenge is Disney has these two avenues and they aren't showing themselves to be great at figuring out which belongs where, like what stories belong where. Look at the confusion over Armor Wars, which we don't think is going to happen. Starts out as a TV mm. show, then it becomes a movie. Like, well, you know, those are two very different things. And now Marvel is completely overhauling. Oh, you said very rightly, Secret Invasion should not be a TV show. Mm. Secret Invasion should be a movie. And look what happened. The series was a disaster to the point where the Marvels ignored it entirely, basically. So that's part of the issue is like Disney needs to figure out accurately what belongs where to make these two television and big screen work actually in tandem. And the irony is the backwards ass organization at <laughs> Warner Brothers may actually be doing it better because if this Penguin show is as good as we think, there may actually be a synergy between the Batman part one to the Penguin to the Batman part two. <laughs> Which would be pretty damn funny if they wind up pulling off the very thing that Disney was supposed to be doing supposed in the first doing, place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian, anything else? Um, well, let's give some ideas. Okay. So you, we, you had talked about this. And, and again, this is... We're going to put ourselves out here a little bit. People have feel some way about what we're going to say and they can criticize and that's great. But like, if you're going to take shots, you know, to be fair to Marvel, you should give them some ideas for where to start mm -hmm. and where to start realistically. Right. Cause they're like an unrealistic idea is the rumored one of pay Downey, pay ScarJo, pay all these people, pay Chris Evans what they want, bring them all back. And that'll fix. No, it won't. that's give not a that realistic one. idea. That's give a bad that. idea. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Would that movie make a billion dollars gross? Yes, it would. Would it be something Is it a that huge risk of it being a, a disaster in terms of critics and how people... Absolutely. Would it cheapen is, is, what is, is came it before? risk for your future growth or revenue? And, yes. Would it yeah. cheapen what came before? Yes. Would it potentially <clears throat> hurt future opportunities for the broader MC? Yes. This is why it's a bad idea. So that's not what we're talking about. Realistic ideas based upon what you have on the board. That's kind of what we're looking at. That can grow, as Pablo said, into a billion dollar plus franchise. Yeah. Do you want to go first? What do you want to what do you want to see or what do you think could give them a starting point that would help? Everybody's waiting for the mutants, right? But people see but they look to be unsure of how to begin. Mm hmm obviously that 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 teaser trailer or oh, not the teaser trailer that teaser scene uh end credit scene with beast and the familiar look of the x-men the animated series was to me brian a sort of test or feeling out sort of thing to see how people react to that uh whether they how far they go i don't know but they should be looking to really go down that road. And it seems, Brian, that they seem to be doing that, Brian, with the Fantastic Four and the announcements that they've made uh, and, and the chances that gonna, they're going to be taking. I do think, though, that X-Men is your best bet. So I would agree. I am going to say one thing that... Disney, you know, has to be aware of. They have to be self-aware because Disney itself is a, is a lightning rod right now. Sorry, that's something they help create themselves, but that's the truth. They need to call it the X-Men. I'm sorry. Like, I know there's talk that they will, because of the gender in the name, they want to do away with the name and call it the mute. I'm telling you, the sensitivity around, around them this may not be fair, but the sensitivity around anything Disney right now, as it pertains to stuff like that, that will be a big minus one for a certain segment of the audience if they do it. The pitch I would make is use the name X-Men and make the pitch that the whole origin and purpose of the creation of the comic and what it came to represent was in and of itself a discussion of inclusion versus discrimination. It, it, more than any other series, part of what makes it interesting has been that DNA. Yeah. 
And the name X-Men, even though it has men in it, actually symbolizes progress in that regard, not archaic thinking. I think that's, an, I agree that it should be a linchpin of what they do. I think the name should stay. And I think they mm -hmm. should politic, I think they should spin the name as a positive. Yeah. Not antiquated. But I'm afraid they're going to get rid of it. And immediately people are going to lose their minds before they even shoot a frame. Mm. And that's going to hurt the box for some of these if projects. If they allocate. do that, I'm out. I'm sorry. I'm out. I'm, as much as I would like to be in. Damn, am I out, man? I, it's the thing is that the fact that you're making me have to think about that choice. Just because I want to see on screen what a Cyclops and Wolverine and all these other characters look like, right? From the MCU perspective, from the people that, you know, that want to do a live action, their version of a live action comic book, perhaps accurate version of, uh, uh, of the X-Men. I think their other challenge is because we've gotten some pretty good X films through the years. This is a, you know, this is one, another one where like Fox explored the studio space pretty well in some regards. X2, Days of Future Past, uh, First Class, which was a period piece. Like they've done some things with this already that I think you need to find new ground um, with how you want to set up this version of it. Uh, I'm fine with Deadpool 3 resolving the Fox universe. That's great. Like I actually think that's a good use of that movie and could be yeah. fun if they do it well because there's yeah. some good actors involved there. But yeah, I think something new, I think something that has a real tone that we haven't really seen before, uh, maybe a more serious tone, that could be very interesting uh, and doesn't require heavy VFX, um, you know, really focuses on character, you know, and, and, and emotion. Like, I, I'm in for that. Uh, and I think they can be careful with how, which characters they introduce because there's so many. Um, exactly. You know, so I think that's a, that's a good one. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to, uh, we have been we've been pretty right in giving you a lot of negative blade information um, for, for a while here. That seems, but I'm going to work with what's on the board. I'm going to save blade. I'm going to save blade as one of my things that I think they could actually use to help themselves right here. I don't know if they'll do it, but this would be what I would do. Wow. So what we, what we hear is they've got a hundred, basically we have a hundred million dollar budget to work with for blade. I would, Change. I would. I mean, they're already starting over again, so I don't have to worry about that. I would change directors again, and here, and I would call Gareth Evans, who directed the Raid. The and Raid. I would, the Raid. One of the great Asian action movies of the last twenty years. If you haven't seen the Raid, watch the Raid. Okay. I would bring that kind of action to an R-rated Blade. I mean. This is a this is a badass killer with a sword. The raid has incredible action, incredible martial arts, incredible intensity. It is no frills. It is balls to the wall, nonstop, razor thin story. I want that for Blade. You could even remake the raid with Blade if you want, which is basically him infiltrating a a, a building full of, in this case, it would be vampires, cutting his way all the way to the top to fight some big boss. Simple, 90 minutes, <clears throat> high body count, incredible martial arts, limited VFX. Yeah. That's it. Maximum carnage. Yeah. I actually think if that's the case, with a hard R, I can get 250, 300 million bucks on a $100 million budget. And now I've got a franchise again. And I've got something that has people talking. I didn't know Disney had that in them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I give yeah. you that as a starting point. That's not a billion. That's a starting point for a very troubled franchise. Yeah, I agree. That is a good that, that Blade is not one that you should be should throw away. Three Blade has the possibility of getting you Midnight Suns, the getting you the big billion dollar franchise within the MCU that isn't the Avengers. So. Brian, whether they go that route or not, it, it seems that they're, they're, they're heading somewhere that's different from where they, it was going. Uh, they, they, they've they announced that that, that, that Blade is going to be rated R for sure, for sure. Um, what that means for Mahershala Ali's participation in this movie, 
uh, I would assume people would ask me, should he leave now? I deliberately did not include that in my analysis because like, I still feel like the odds are he will wind up not doing this push comes to shove, mm -hmm. but I almost tried to come up with a project where it didn't matter. I tried to come up with one where the selling point of the movie is the tone, the action, the grittiness of it, like the anti VFX of it mm -hmm. as to me, one way that you could also, which I think is important contrast with the snipes version snipes version has great action great martial arts there is a lot of bad cgi because of the way they had to portray you know steven dwarf's character and some of the vampires mm -hmm. so i think that's one way we can get away from those comparisons is really put this more toward as i said to sort of the eight sort of the the asian style action of of some of the you know intensity of, of the raid movies that's kind of what my my solution to that was that's one of the ideas that i had uh, my second one I actually kind of gave in the other show, which is it leverages off the Fantastic Four, but it's it's the Doom movie from Doom's perspective, where you actually leave, and it's all about his charisma, his agenda, you know, his sort of you know I don't know penchant for evil, but penchant for genius, and you kind of are mixed on the Fantastic Four. I, I sort of like the next of Tony Stark. Yeah, like it's because like one of those where like you don't have to tweak that much for him to be a hero, but you tweak just those few things and he's a mega villain. <laughs> I think with the right jump point, the Fantastic Four is even decent. I think that could be like 600, 700 million if you do it right. Yeah. And we're talking about the actor, <clears throat> whoever, as almost like a almost like a Darth Vader type, right? Talk about another character who who, who basically was always behind the mask in the original yeah. trilogy, but it didn't matter. You know, that that that's kind of what I think we're going for. I'll leave you off with this last one, and then we'll sign off, Brian. Um, and by the way, those those are two great ideas. Uh, but it, it seems that we're going, um, based on the rumors, that we're probably going with Galactus for the Fantastic Four, for the Fantastic Four. Although I don't think they they should. Um, but if they wanted a for sure a billion dollar movie, when they do finally meet. It would be after a film where they, a Silver Surfer film. Mm. Give me a Silver Surfer film on the planet Zen La, showing the Kree and the scrolls. Yo, all you gotta do is go to the animated series, man. That tells you everything you need to see right there, and it it makes you look forward to seeing everything else when they do finally arrive on Earth with the fantastic. Come on, that's a that's a billion dollars guarantee, guarantee. I mean, again, interesting too because there's limited like it's more of a con conflicted hero, if you will. He's not really he right. He's sort of part hero, part torn with his obligation to Galactus. So it's a very interesting relationship. Again, Certainly. you're trying to break convention. That's part of what I think Marvel needs to do is you're trying to find these like new formulas that can wake people up. And that's why that's I think you're that's that's why I think you're onto something with that or the doom perspective or, you know, the, or making Blade into something like that. I think that's helps. It just helps wash people's minds yeah, of some man. of the stuff that hasn't been worked. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below, man, what you guys think of where Marvel should be heading next, man, because obviously the Marvels was something that was doomed <laughs> from jump. And now you have to live with that. Um, I told you so situation because I'm pretty sure there were people behind the scenes knowing that this wasn't going to work. But the yes men were there telling you, yes, 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 yes. And we got the marbles. And now it seems there seems to be crisis. In, in 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 trying to avert an iceberg, but they hit it already. Now they're yeah, just think, trying to I stay the was, I think the Marvels was contact. <laughs> like the Titanic hull it has a big hole in it, and the ship is the ship is like broken in half and it's upside down in the frozen <laughs> water. That's where we're at with this. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so let us know in the comments below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes.